lips, read your mind. Gonna paint these bodies up with um, two different ways, masking tape versus fast mask. Of course, fast mask has to be shaken up really well because it's basically like a rubber in a tube. But I'm gonna do one body with the actual tape masking and then I'm gonna do another one with fast mask because I wanna try something new. Now, in order to use the fast mask, you wanna definitely pre-mark all your holes and in a lot of cases draw out the lines you intend to make using the fast mask so that you know where to trace along. I think I'm probably gonna freeform this a little bit just because I haven't decided the exact design that I wanna do on it. But in this video, we're basically gonna take you through the painting of both. The other one is gonna be more like a triple stripe, actually a quadruple stripe. And in order to do that, I need to cut the bodies out first because when you cut after you paint, you run the risk of scratching the paint so it's always wise to cut out your bodies before painting obviously leaving the film on and that's what I'm doing here now I hate cutting bodies can I just say that I hate it by the end of it my forearms are throbbing uh, my neck hurts um, you can never get the angle you want it's horrifyingly painful and anybody that says otherwise is just lying to you um, it only takes a tiny slip up and then you cut into an area you didn't want to and you totally messed up your whole job. I hate it. So what I try to do is when I do bodies, I remember that the more I take my time and the more I be patient and the more effort I put into actually masking it up or cutting it out or whatever, just means it's gonna look better in the end. Plus in RC, it's, you're, it's really a forgiving hobby. I mean, once you get all the accessories on there and you get everything together, they're not gonna really notice those little smudges here and there because it's about the overall look. But if you really wanna do a good job, you really have to take your time and be patient. Patience is a virtue. Okay, so when I'm done cutting it out, I'm basically gonna do a standard three stripe paint job where I'm gonna run a center stripe down the top and then I'm gonna run two other stripes using just the green tape um, on the left and right hand side of that. Then I'm gonna paint the body a different color as the outer stripe and then a different color as the inner stripe. And then I was gonna do one stripe in the middle of the middle stripe, but I think I'm gonna use stickers for that and I'll show you how to do that later. Anyways, as you can see here, I've masked off all the areas that I wanna paint with the three stripes and the front and the back for the gunmetal gray that I'm gonna do for the bumpers. And then I'm just gonna do a real nice light coat just to get sort of the area that I'm painting um, tacky enough to take on the multiple layers. Of course, I'm gonna let it dry in between each coat for about you know five or six minutes because I'm painting really light coats. And then I'm just gonna go over it again probably two or three more times for the outer body color, which is this metallic blue, which I like a lot. I love this metallic blue color. Also, since the Firebrand logos that I'm using for the build are gonna be the blue versions of the logo, so all my lighting and all of the stickers and all the body's gonna have that Firebrand, Firebrand blue. Um, again, this build is going at the booth at RCX. So now that I've laid on a couple of layers of paint, I'm gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna come back to it. Now you can see I've got the film's still on here, and I've you can see where I've marked before I painted what colors were gonna be what, just in case I have a brain fart right in the middle of it and forget what I'm doing. But you can see here with the masking on, with the, with the blue color, it looks great. It's got the three stripes down the center, just like I was looking for. Um, and then I'm gonna add an additional stripe with the actual sticker that I have, and I'm gonna show you where I get that from in a minute. Um, but I think it turned out looking really nice. And this is the first body of two that I'm doing. Um, both hopefully will be on display at RCX, but only one of them I'm entering into the competition I'm having with RC in Motion and RC Militia. Uh, so hopefully one of the two of them will look better and then I'll enter that one. And I think it's gonna be the fast mast version, but I think that looks pretty slick. I mean, with the film off, you can see it looks amazing. Now to get the center stripe that I wanna do, I'm always for keeping all your stickers all the time because you never know what you're gonna need. And in this case, I need some stripes. And I know that underneath the actual mask, there's a white line that's fairly straight from the cut of the sticker sheet. So I'm actually gonna use that as the center stripe. And I could have easily just painted the center stripe by adding another piece of masking tape. But for some reason, I thought this was kind of a cool way to start 
the transition from paint to stickers, which undoubtedly I'm gonna put a ton of stickers on this thing. And I'd be curious to know how many people actually noticed this at RCX, um, because I, I doubt anyone's even gonna notice. They'll probably think that I painted it on the outside of the body using that, but always keep your stickers because you never know what kind of shapes or things that you're gonna need for whatever design you're going for once you get through the paint. And this is just another way that I choose to use the stickers to complete this design. And you can see, I mean, with the added white, it really adds a pop to the overall look and takes it from being so dark to having sort of a lighter feel. And I, I think that that speaks volumes to coordinating your colors together before you start. So you make sure you get that exact, exact right mix of darkness versus the light. Now I mounted up the rear wing kit that's from the wing kit from uh, Firebrand RC. This is the one that's the separate unit. Doesn't come with the body and it mounted up perfectly. Uh, I was originally thinking of painting the wing kit on this one, but I think on this one I'm just going to use stickers and uh, doctor up the body and then it should look good from there. I mean already it's starting to look smoking with the interior in there. You can see that interior just looks awesome. I added the, um, the Firebrand RC accessory kit uh, windshield wipers and I also just went nuts on all the accessories I could. Now, the second body I'm painting is the first time I've ever done fast mask. And apparently you just brush on about three and four coats of this stuff and be generous with your coats. Um, not too generous because it takes a while to dry. You wanna allow four to six hours to dry in between each coat. So this whole process of four coats took me a whole entire day. I started in the morning and every four hours I would check it to make sure it was clear and see-through uh, before I painted on another level. And the more th layers that you have, the easier it is to cut with the X-Acto knife without harming the body. Uh, the fewer the layers, the harder it is to, to cut okay and also to peel off because there's just not enough of a layer of this sort of plastic rubbery material to peel. So when you're, when you're doing the fast mask, make sure that you get all the little crevices and you cover every square inch of the body so that you don't have a a part of it that's uncovered that you'll actually spray paint on. So make sure you just check all your angles and check all the little nooks and crannies and in between all the little folds in the in the body and everything to get every little piece. And um, once you do that, just let it dry, let it dry, let it dry, let it dry until it's perfectly clear. Well, it'll be kind of hazy, but there won't be any other spots. Make sure you wash off your brush after every application so you don't end up with a crappy brush either. So now you can see I've drawn on the design that I want to go with and I'm starting to paint starting with the darkest color first and working my way up to the lightest so first the black accents are what are doing what I'm doing and Hemistorm had a good tip he says take some sort of paper or something to block where you're spraying because if you spray too much on the body then it becomes harder and harder to see the lines you've drawn so you want to try to limit the amount of overspray that you have on the fast mask so that that way you can continue to see your lines of course I'm so impatient, I totally neglected this entire tip and I ended up with the last layer I had to peel. I literally almost had to do it freehand because I just couldn't see the lines anymore. Um, but that's my own fault and I don't think it de detrimented the body at all. But you can see here I'm just using the black to go over the, the, the window areas which normally would be a sticker. So this is one of the first time I'm painting the window frames, so to speak, of the molding. Uh, rather than using the stickers because I want to have only the stickers I want to have on here and I want to have the rest of the build represented by the paint. Um, I'm not doing a Transformers theme like Jamera over at RC Militia, but I think my overall look will be scale enough to make it the winner in our little Firebrand RC build off. So hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll um, you know, hold muster against their builds. Anyways, I'll sit there, let that dry five or ten minutes just to make sure it's good and dry. Uh, maybe add a couple of layers just to make sure there's enough um, to cover all of the exposed parts from where the fast color is or the fast mask. Um, and then I can move on to the next part, which is ultimately peeling off more of the fast mask in the areas that I want to paint the next color, which is the next darkest color. In my case, it's gunmetal gray. So I'm going to do gunmetal gray, then I'm going to do metallic blue, then I'm going to do baby glue baby blue and then the majority of the rest of the detail on the body is going to be from the sticker kit and from the Firebrand RC logos. Now I'm back to the next color which is the gunmetal gray. This gunmetal gray is going to wrap around the outside of the body kind of like a fairing kit and I'm also incorporating some of the metallic blue in there to really um, bring the dark up into the light from the bottom of the body up to the top. 
Um, I always like going brighter on the top and darker on the bottom. I just think it looks better and it gives the car some depth uh, rather than looking like a vehicle that has a slice through it by having the dark colors at the top and the light at the bottom. And also, I feel like stripes and, and different designs can make your body appear whiter than it actually is, which is great for drift whips because, you know, you get 6mm extenders or even 10mm extenders, then you get a 10mm or 12mm deep hub, and then you get the fairing kits and you get the stripes on there, and everything looks super fat and super wide, and that's what makes a really cool drift whip, in my opinion. Now, on to the next color really is this metallic blue. This metallic blue is going to, like I said, bring the color up from the darkness, and then it's gonna lead into the baby blue on the top and some other accents. So again, it's the same process. You peel off the fast color or the fast mask, and then you just paint the areas that you wanna paint. You can see my mistake here is that I painted too much gunmetal gray, so now I'm running out of um, vision toward the lines that I had originally created. Thank God I know the design pretty well, so I can freehand it but you can see by using the protective sheet of paper, you can really you know, block off a lot of the overspray and make it easier for yourself. So this one, gunmetal, let it dry, do a couple more coats, uh, and then we're good to go. Now I peeled off the next layer, and I'm using this baby blue uh, for a kind of a, a swoosh down the side and then some accents on the top. Um, I always like seeing drift whips that have really bright colors because they look really cool on the track, like you can spot them, like a red and a yellow or like a neon green or something. Um, so this baby blue is going to really make it pop and you can see the design starting to come together. It looks really cool. Now here's the finished product. Um, you can see I still have the overspray film on it. Um, I made a big mistake actually with this body. Um, when I was peeling off the fast mask, I forgot to leave on a spot on the front lights here. You can see I painted the front lights. This was a big problem for me. I was really upset about this, but then I remembered if I cut out these lights, then I can put like a form of like mesh behind it and then it looks a little bit more raced out. Like you don't need headlamps, you just need, you know, the, the, the mesh in there. So I think when I cut those out and I get the mesh in there, it's gonna look really, really, really cool. Now, I'm hoping that this build's gonna be good enough to enter into the competition. Uh, a lot of you have been following on what RC in Motion and what RC Militia has done. We're doing a Firebrand RC Drift Whip build off. Uh, I've got my TTO2 with this body and I'm adding a ton of accessories and I've seen some sneak previews of what those guys are doing. If you wanna check out where they're at, go check out their channels on YouTube, RC Militia and RC in Motion. And um, Hopefully I'll win. Hopefully Darren and, and Christograph Hemistorm will choose my car as the best one. I think the paint job came out awesome. But hey, what do you think? Leave, it, leave your comments in the comments below and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Anyways, this is Read Your Mind and I am out of here.